Hi, it's Mickey Dolans here. You're listening to Inspirado Projecto. So all those little, uh, those little people yelling, all that, that stuff, that's, these are the credits of a game I just played called Pendragon, and there are multitudes of choose-your-own-adventure moments in this game. You first start out the journey, man, that, that was, like, intense. It's really interesting, it's kind of like chess, slightly in a way... Because you have to kind of like strategize when it comes time to fight. Um, kind of moving along squares. Uh, the music in this is just phenomenal. Sir Lancelot. Um, King Arthur. What is it? Uh, is it Guinevere? One of beer. Um, but yeah, so you collect people along the way. Uh, your dialogue has, a, I mean, so much to do with which way your adventure is going to turn next. As any of these great games know, it's that dialogue that you're having that's going to... You have no idea how that, that the consequences of what it is that you're doing or saying, killing the people that your creatures are killing or not killing... Uh, uh, the consequences of letting them live. What possible havoc could they wreak on people? So in this game, you start out either as Sir Lancelot or Guinevere. Is that it? And uh, it turns out that these two were there was hanky panky going on. They were they were they were cheating behind uh, King Arthur's back. And Sir Mordred hates his dad. Hates him. Mordred has gone on a rampage. Mordred's gone on a rampage. And that's and it's up to you to to stop him. And so the very first time I played thank you again, by the way, Emily Morganti, for putting me in touch with these extraordinary video game companies who who then uh, allow me to play these video games and then and then and review them and just give my opinion about what I think about these things. I think these are great. The cool thing about video games is that they enlighten your brain. They uh, play with your critical thinking skills, your ability to kind of see, uh, foresee the way in which dominoes are going to move along. So the first time I tried, I was Guinevere, and oh man, I just didn't make any good decisions. Sometimes you're in the heat of battle, and it, you're you're kind of forced to kind of go into berserk mode. And I was still trying to figure out the controls at that point, and uh, they ended up killing her. Oh man, it's so sad. But the the two people that she had with her, these two folks, see the idea was to to carry on the name or the tradition or the you know. The legend of Camelot. And, uh, so, was it like Guinevere? Gosh, I should just go back and, but I like the sound of those people in the background. Let's see. Let's see, let's see. Difficulty. Oh, man. Anecdotal. Oh, Guinevere, yeah. Uh, oh, looks like each time you go through it, it raises the difficulty level the next time you play it. <laughs> Interesting. Wow. Difficulty affects enemy cunning, likelihood of encountering allies, and food scarcity. Incredible. Wow. Yeah, that's the thing. You get food, and then you gotta you got these rations. Otherwise, you can't lose your mor morale. It's important. 
So Queen Guinevere of Camelot, the, the gracious wife of Arthur, unfaithful and yet ever loyal. Or you could choose Sir Lancelot du Lac, Arthur's chivalrous best friend and traitor to him. So I completed it in this kind of level called anecdotal, which is not the most difficult, but they say it's not the most difficult. It's a tricky one. And then there are these darkened people. There's one called a force for evil, and then one called a powerful swordstress. Now, I can also choose in playing Sir Kay. Oh, my God. Interesting. So now you get a chance to see their story. That's crazy. Because this is what happened when I was with Queen Guinevere walking along. Uh, as you're going through these castles and you're going through this map, you know, you're kind of choosing which, which way you want to go. And you can't necessarily go back and go the other ways. So you're just kind of moving on forward, kind of moving with your intuition. And then you decide whether you want to sleep over at these places or not. Because, you, you know, you're, there might be these big spiders that you're battling. And uh, the, gra the, the graphics are so unique. The art is so unique. It's really interesting. It's like, how, how do you even describe this? You've just got to see it. It gives you a good feeling. It gives me a good feeling. If you like the medieval times and, uh, and that age, I think you'll get a good feeling from this. Sir Kay. Arthur's tenacious elder brother and a man of finer things. Okay, that's what I was going to say. So when I was with Lady Guinevere, we're walking along, uh, and then she came across a knight, this woman knight, and uh, they got to talking, and they decided to band forces. And it's great because you set up these little campfires, and then the lady would tell stories, and you can kind of dictate based on your questions how how the story is going to go. Like the lady will go, Hey, do you want to hear a story about, uh, a story about, uh, learning a moral or a story of fear and bloodshed? You know, and you're going, Whoa, which one do I want to hear before, before I fall asleep? So, uh, then you, you know, you choose one, you just go, go down that rabbit hole. So she was someone that I found along the way. And then along the way came along Sir Kay Here's another invisible one, a roguish knight, another another shadow one, a prophet and maniac, another one, broken man, and a terror of the woods. Those are the various people that you can go from their stories. So that was so crazy, so awesome. All right, so yeah, when you're playing this game, you're going from different angles on the map, the same map. It's just this is just opening up more and more stories for you. It's cool because it's short. If you could survive long enough, it's a short game, which is awesome, which I love because then it inspires you to want to go back through and go back through this way, go back through that way. Queen Guinevere of Camelot. I mean, this is just so kick ass. Sir Lancelot Dulac, or this guy, Walt. Sir Kay. So now it makes sense when I was fighting and then Queen Guinevere died. Basically, the whole idea was that Sir Kay was going to carry on the name. You know, they're going to try to meet up with King Arthur. That was the mission and defeat Mordred. So these guys are all, you know, part of, and you know, there's a brotherhood here. It's like, uh, it's a tricky thing. These stories, you're, n you're not given, <laughs> you're, not, you're not given easy answers. So someone will say, I'll tear you limb from limb, and then you're given two choices. You're like, come on, tell me more about this thing. Tell me more about that thing. Meanwhile, if you're talking too much, they're moving towards you. And you're like, you're putting your life on the line. You're like, okay, do I friend or foe? I tried, I tried being a friend in the, in the thing that I, they just ended here. Luckily, luckily, he didn't, he didn't kill me right away as I tried to be nice and friendly. Um, but it was like, it's, it, these skills, the crazy thing is you have to be standing in a particular position in order to use the skill. Now it takes a whole turn. 
So that's where this really interesting strategy kind of like chess or checkers kind of come in because you might gain a skill where you can attack diagonally. Um, you may get a skill where you can jump through, like, because there'll be, there'll be, there might be a hedge between you uh, and the neck and the next square where the bad guy is or whoever your opponent is. So some of these things you can actually charge through it. That's one of your skills. One of them is you go diagonal. One of them is you can retreat. One of them is you can call your other buddies up on the on the uh, into the area, uh, which I tried to do when I was King Arthur. Sometimes it gives you an option, but then it doesn't let you choose that option. It's really interesting. Really good game. Really good game. I'll tell you more about it later. So I think I figured out a way to describe the art. The art, it's 2D. It's 2D. And it's interesting because when you're moving, you'll have two different stances. Uh, but when you see them move across the map, it's really cool because they'll walk across the map. So you, you could choose between this spot or that spot over there. And then when you when you click on the thing, it'll give you a little bit of information about it. And if it's a if it's a place that you can actually go to, it'll it'll show like an arrow, and you click on that, and the arrow will take you there. And your little person will go over the hills and ch -ch -ch -ch, walking along. But it's funny because they'll they'll turn around. You'll see a little person turn around, but it's like a two D thing. It's like it's like a imagine uh, like a okay so imagine like a paper doll and if you were like to glue it to a base and you spin that base around imagine that so you see like turns to the side it's like very thin and then flips back over to uh is it's imagine that how it's kind of spinning a little bit so it's going over the over the hills over the hills and then so then when you arrive at a place but there's just so much, so much great story going on in this thing. So much great knowledge that I tell you, I, it, it, this is now inspiring me to want to crack open the books about uh, Knights of the Round Table, Camelot, all that stuff. You know, it's so interesting. Growing up, I've appreciated hearing stories concerning Camelot, Knights of the Round Table, stuff like that. But I, I cannot say that I've necessarily totally retained that information. I've heard the words. I've heard the, more, more, most is buzzwords, King Arthur. Uh, I don't, Mordred, that does sound familiar. Guinevere, yeah. Sir Lancelot, yeah. Because he, wasn't he the one, uh, was he the one who pulled out the Excalibur out of the stone? I don't know. I don't know. Am I, am I, am I mixing up uh, mythologies? Anyway. Main point is this this video game is inspiring me to want to look deeper into this the history of this stuff to see to see how close this stuff matched up how close did this history match up there are certain key points but then what's beautiful is with with the minutia of it like little conversations and whatnot that maybe were not mentioned in any books um, all that stuff is made up so it's very much improvised. Feels that it feels that way. So you got the key points. It's like improvisation. You got the key points. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk about this subject, and then eventually go to that subject, and eventually go to that subject. And then when the guy walks through the door, we're gonna talk about this subject. But anything in between is kind of kind of loosey goosey. Uh, but this, what's so interesting is that must be so fun to create a historical recounting. And then add all of the elements. What if they went this way? What if they went that way? What if they met this type of person? What if they met that type of person? Because it's... History is like that. It's anybody's guess. You've got people who documented it. I would say with technology, we've been able to really... I mean, even then. Even then you try to document that stuff. It's all de dependent upon who's editing it. Who's uh, adding the CGI to it or not. So Pendragon, if you're a video game enthusiast, you can get it on Steam. I'm going to look up the uh, makers of this game here. Let's see. Let's see.
Gosh, what's so fascinating? Yeah, this game, AD673. Camelot has fallen. The round table must rally to save King Arthur. Narrative strategy game from the creators of 80 Days with elegant tactics and a unique dynamic story every time you replay. It's just such a such a brilliant idea. They created another game called Heaven's Vault. Um, the release date was September 22nd. Inkle. LTD. Inkle. I-N-K-L-E. Limited. I guess that stands for LTD. Impactful choices. That's a powerful way of... That's a powerful description. Impactful choices, if you think about that. Impactful choices. That means that there's no way that you could ever possibly know the ways in which your decisions are going to evolve down the line. Very much like life, isn't it? As they say, art reflects life, life reflects art. If the video games reflect reflect life... I mean, look at that. What can we learn from what we've learned in the video games? Impactful decisions. This kind of leads to a good mindful mindset, I would think. Being aware of the thing that we might say right now. If we could teach kids that at a very young age, the ways in which... Like a way to teach them a visual visual of that. The way that your words and your decisions now are going to impact the future. Then we would probably have a lot less kids being bullied. A lot less kids wanting to bully. Because imagine the kids being bullied. They get, they, you know... They've probably got that black book filled with all their enemies' names, and once they get out of high school, they're like, I'm going to take revenge on all these people. You don't want to have that hanging around for years and years and years. You don't want some video resur- you know, resurfacing eons down the line when you're, maybe you become a famous rock star or uh, astronaut or something like that, and all of a sudden someone's like, oh, well, this footage was released of this guy... Uh, chopping down an Amazon rainforest tree, chanting horrible, horrible things. <laughs> Impactful choices. So I'm just glad that video games like this exist. Impactful choices. Gosh. This is fantastic. I'm going to go eat some breakfast. I'm going to come back with some more praise for this game. I'm going to give you the uh, list of the credits. Stay tuned. In Sparato Projecto. Okay, hold on, we gotta get the sun that. I love it. God, don't you just love that nature? There's the antenna tree, waving gallantly, as per usual. Oh, you love the camera. And the audio. The audio loves you, antenna tree. You too, birdies. Gosh, just the sounds in nature. It becomes an orchestra in its own, in its own. Like, would this be considered a, a noise band type of thing? All right, we're gonna go down a rabbit hole here. We gotta go back in here, into the laboratory, into the laboratory. Let's check this out. Okay, so Inkle, they're the makers of this. About, okay, I'm going under the about thing here. All it says is. Interactive adventures that span the world, cross the wilderness, and dig deep into the past. Every action will shape your story. That's all I see in the About section. Um, I want to find out the, the credits of this. Oh, you know what? I wonder if they got them in the game itself. All right, so we're going we're gonna to open up the game itself. Here we go. We're diving back into this game. Impactful choices. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be using that phrase quite a bit. I can guarantee you. It. Oh, by the way, keep your ears out if you haven't stumbled upon these yet, or if they haven't assaulted you yet. The words robust, pivot. Those are those are two big ones I've been noticing a lot. People using the word pivot a lot. Robust. I've been seeing it a lot. 
These things fascinate me, folks. If you can find the breadcrumb, where it first began, the idea where people first started saying pivot. Um, was it the reemergence of an old movie, maybe? And they use that word there a lot. Uh, an old basketball movie, was it a, uh, in the news, someone saying pivot? What is he doing to pivot the candidacy? Uh, was it, uh, oh, credits, here we go. Pendragon, I knew you, I knew you wouldn't. I knew you wouldn't. Okay, here we go. A concept by Tom Kale, K-E-I-L. Tom Kale. These are the guys who helped uh, develop it. John Ingold. Tom Kale. Wow. Joseph Humphrey. Anastasia Wyatt. Anastasia Wyatt did all the character design. Environment art. Music by Lawrence Chapman. Great. Oh, you can buy the soundtrack. <clears throat> These are the... Gosh. So cool. There's a lot. A lot of performers. A lot of performers in this. Uh, many more. Many more that... Uh, who knows? I remember there was a there was a part where he came across this this old guy kind of like splashing about in the water, and these people thought maybe he was Merlin. It's interesting. It's interesting with the conversations in Pendragon. If you give it a little bit of time, like there are parts where you're out there with your 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 little people moving across the square, and you might see some knights, and the knights are on behalf of Mordred, and they're like we will die for Mordred, and. uh and you're like, dude, you're going to kill me on behalf of a madman who is the son of the king. Uh, that I that I serve like if it wasn't for the king, the sudden the son wouldn't even exist. So. You know, it's interesting how you can have two sides. Well, hell, many sides of a story. So to the Mordred guy, these people, these 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 knights thought he was he was worth dying for apparently, or or uh, his own grudges were, were his grudges were worth taking on themselves as their own grudges, and maybe he promises them riches. You, you never know. How do you get the riches? Well, the rape and the pillaging. You don't have to do the raping. Come on, guys. Come on. That's just adding injury to insult and added, added to the fact... That, no, just, like, come on. So it's bad enough that you're stealing our stuff. Why do you got to burn down the village and... rape our women? God, man. Come on. Just... So something about this behavior appeals... Appeals to the guys, they're fighting on that side. No. They, based on the stories that Mordred have told them, King Arthur is horrible, terrible. And that's through Mordred's perspective. That's through his, maybe he's uh, embellishing things, maybe he's dramatizing things. It's crazy what can happen when you're, uh, somehow you get addicted to that power. That idea of people just doing what you want, th want them to do. You just tell them what to do to do and they do it having that kind of power it's interesting how that connotation when, when people have that much power why they would choose to want to just add rudeness on top of it if you already got people doing your bidding wouldn't you rather have them like why, why keep them in fear because they're all secretly plotting your death. They're all secretly figuring out ways to try to get out of the situation or, or over, overthrow you. That's just not good. You want to have good people that you're collaborating along with. People that want to, you know, do your bidding, as they say. Do my bidding. I say. 
dear population, do my bidding now, now. Which is why everyone involved with Crystor Inc. and that whole world, the nonchalance world, why uh, they're, they're so be obedient to it. It's fun, it's playful, it's something you want to be a part of. So back to Pendragon, by, which, by the way, we have a phone call I'll play after this uh, that we got from a uh, second phone call that we've gotten from the Texas division of Crystor Inc., the, uh, the ambassador of the Texas division. He uh, left a message, and so I want to pass those savings on to you. Uh, as you'll notice, there's a, a long, there'll be a long pause of silence, so don't turn it off. Because maybe if you turn up the volume, you might hear secret, secret uh, codes in there. Maybe they recorded a. Uh, maybe there, maybe there's some messages in there that are just quiet. That's something I'm going to try to do before I share this. I'm going to. No, well, I'm going to do it. I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm going to mess with the audio. We're going to raise that volume in the middle just to see. Is there something in there that we sh we should be. We should be hearing. Uh, back to Pendragon. It must be so fun and crazy to see what these game developers go through. I imagine like the conspiracy, you know, like you always see like the, uh, when they, when they, when they depict conspiracy theorists, they show like the, the classic spider web wagon wheel up on the wall and you see the photos and you see the, uh, the, the little thumbtacks, you see the strings connecting them. So brilliant. So brilliant. Whoever thought of that uh, method, I just think is just absolutely brilliant. It's thanks to that person and those people who first started doing that that the rest of us can then follow in suit. And that's what it kind of reminds me of in the offices of these or on their whiteboards or what, however they're doing this virtual, maybe there's a virtual whiteboard somewhere that they're meeting and they're just, they're connecting all the dots. All the minutia. I mean, there's so much minutia. So many possible directions. I would love to know, for the people who make Choose Your Own Adventure books, um, impactful choice type video games, what their thoughts are about quantum mechanics <clears throat> and the idea of the parallel universes. For instance, with Pendragon, how many parallel universes exist? How deep down the choice rabbit hole do you go that's another thing is it a four five six or seven choice rabbit hole i mean each and every single time because what the heck because then there's always a what if this what if that what if this what if that what if what if you said this instead instead of that if you didn't ask about this kind of story then you never would have learned about that thing which then helps you out later later on in in the game and uh, same thing you open up this choice here for this person to talk about this story here or that happened to them and they uh, reveal this piece of information which does in fact help you out and then you're able to recognize someone at a later location you go ooh instead of going instead of going oh we're gonna fight you're like wait are you the guy that was just mentioned by this person this traveler that's the thing too during your um you could brave it alone, you know. I mean, uh, on Pendragon, you can brave it alone. You can just have your character going in there, and it, it gets tricky when you get three or four different um, enemies on the board, I suppose, who want to hurt you. Um, so it's good to call in your other people, but it costs a move. So while you're bringing in that other person, the other, you know, one of the bad guys is meanwhile they're moving forward. And that's another example of how it's like chess or checkers, which both of those games terrify me. If I had a choice, I'd play checkers. However, now I'm starting to warm up a little more to chess. Uh, that's only because I'm saying it now from a safe zone. When you're there and you're in the heat of battle with chess and the, and, the, and, every, and it's all coming up upon you in checkers, for instance, like checkmate, and then you're like, or whatever that is, and you go, and you piggyback ride the uh, the chip on top of the other chip, and all of a sudden it's like, bom, 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 here comes the giant, and they're coming to you. Here they come. Man. It's just like... It's scary. It's scary. 
forced into a corner. See, it's like, where do you go from there? It's like the opossum forced into a corner. Watch out for the fangs on that one. Watch out for the claws and the fangs on that one. So, Pendragon, if you like thoughtful video games, uh, consider Pendragon. It's got my approval. But I like to try, you know, I like to, I personally, I want to find the fun elements and the fun aspects of games uh, and why they're appealing. One thing that's frustrating to me doesn't mean that it's going to be frustrating to someone else, so why am I going to point that out? I'm not going to point out the crappy things, the frustrating things, the... I mean, if it's like like a playful frustration, like, oh, I'm kind of stuck at this puzzle, and, and then I was frustrated, and then I got past it. I mean, come on. Come on. I, come on. I mean, come on, come on. I saw a review yesterday for, a la- for this uh, laptop. And the guy, you're like, okay, you could tell from his perspective, he was just one of those guys who's willing to point out everything that's just not, that doesn't work well in it. Then you see another review, and the guy's just raving about the same laptop. So chances are we're going to side with the reviews that most, and the reviewers that most reflect us. But if we don't, uh, I guess now you've learned a new perspective. But do you really want to go into buying a product keeping that like a like a video game? If someone's like, well, they don't have this kind of option, so pff, I don't think the video game's worth getting. Or, oh, well, they didn't do it in 3D, so, you know, screw it. You know, I don't think it's good. Well, they didn't use hard rock music. I mean, they used this... Uh, classic classical kind of beethoven crap you know so yeah, i don't think it's worth getting but boom, 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 all the way down the line now what now you're like yeah no now those those views and opinions now become your own because that's all you got and now when people ask you about that or you hear someone telling a conversation about it now you're like oh i've got some information to share about that footnote here's a footnote footnote the information i know about this comes from a review, a, a, a video review I saw about this product from this particular mindset. That's a footnote. That's the parenthesis right there. I've got information I've got to share about this. This thing is ca- terrible. That's crap. This is terrible. They didn't have this. They didn't have that. And burr, 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 burr. Now there's your lens. Go have fun playing. You know, because now what you associate with that, you identify with that. And then that becomes your behavior towards when you're playing the game. Come on. Uh, Why read? Why read a movie review? Unless you're not going to see the movie. I'll read a movie review if I'm just like, I don't I just don't care to see that movie. So I'll read the movie review. That's the cliff notes. I'll read some movie reviews, you know. But I'm not going to read a review if I'm not if I am going to see the movie. Don't you want your own opinions? Yeah, you do. You want your own opinions. So why are you listening to mine? <laughs> uh, why does my opinion matter? It matters to me because I had fun playing the game. My satisfaction, my moment-to-moment joy and enthusiasm is important to me. And for those of you who feel the same, I'm passing on a fun entertainment that will contribute to that uh, mind space. All right, let's go check out this. Let's go check out this Crystor Inc. voicemail. Let's go see what the heck this craziness is all about. Hello? Hello, is this thing on? Hello? 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 Hello, is this thing on? Is it working? Hello? This is Atlas the Dragon. Atlas the Dragon, Texas Ambassador for the Verosper Bridge Society. I have a message that is very important. We have had a clarity sighting here in Texas, and we need your help. I have a very important message. Listen closely, and you shall be rewarded with great, great success. Crystal will grant you access to so much knowledge in the universe. 
So here's your message. I got a little sloppy with that introduction. Um, from what I understand, that is Atlas Dragon uh, from the Varels Bridge Society. He's the the Texas ambassador of that division over there. The Varels Bridge Society is connected to Christor Inc. So, as you can hear, as soon as he... It, the, in the original message, it was pure silence. Remember that part in that message you just heard where it's like... <laughs> That's the normal speed. I just raised the volume. All of that was complete silence on the phone. So I'm hoping those of you who are audiophiles, those of you who love ARGs, those of you who um, know how to crack those secret codes of things like that. I mean, I, I'm, I'm dealing with ARG enthusiasts here, very well-seasoned ARG enthusiasts, computer programmers, uh, hackers, data anal anal an analyzers, these kinds of folks know how to use math in special ways to figure out all kinds of secret codes, which I learned with Mesmer and Braid. People were flipping it upside down, looking at the waveforms, figuring out all kinds of crazy stuff. And the pe and the people that know that there are people who are looking for that, they end up making the ARGs that accommodate that. It's like a little gift for those who, who get it. Uh, it's no different than, um, let's say, a person who's an auto parts enthusiast, someone who builds engines for the little, for, the, for his fellow uh, uh, engine engine workers out there he might throw in a little inside joke he might throw in a little something that they would they would they would totally get that's kind of how these ARGs are it's easter egg after easter egg so what i'm going to do is i slowed down that audio uh to uh, nearly 4 minutes that's all i thought to do so i just all i did was i raised the volume and uh, now, now I'm going to slow it down. But instead of you having to sit here, because there's, there's still more segments to come, I'm, I'm putting that at the end, basically. Before the book, the, you know, the closing um, ceremony, if you will. <laughs> Before the closing ceremony of today's episode. So uh, I also I found it really interesting, Atlas Dragon. This is the guy, Atlas Dragon. And I just reviewed Pendragon. That's pretty cool. That's a cool. That's a cool synchronicity. Uh, except until this point, in the in the in the in the, la in the other episode where I put a message from Atlas Dragon, I didn't know what he said there. That's part of the charm, and you know that's part of the charm when people call into a, a hotline. Which, by the way, if you want to call in 561-203-9179-er, that is the phone number you want to call. That's the phone number Atlas Dragon called, if I, in fact, deciphered it correctly. If I didn't, that's okay. That's my little secret. That's our little secret, Atlas Dragon. That's what I'll call the person. My new nickname. Unless, of course, that's actually Atlas Dragon, in which case... 
etc., etc., and so forth. I'm getting tired of hearing myself talk. All right, all right, all right. Here comes a message from Man Behind the Machine. Man Behind the Machine. Thanks for listening. Remember, call in 561-203-9179-er. Hey, bro, what do you think about Eddie Van Halen dying? What songs did you like? And what did you appreciate about the innovation and the genius that was Eddie? Panama, Panama, rest in peace, Eddie. Man behind the machine. Yeah, man. Boy, oh boy. Eddie Van Halen, that guy. They said that his, he, he must have come from another planet with that guitar playing. Like Jimi Hendrix. Could you imagine what kind of crazy firestorm you'd, you'd, you'd start cooking up if you had Jimi Hendrix and Eddie Van Halen playing together in the same room? Yikes. Just think, in a parallel universe, those guys, I mean, heck, right now they're jamming together. Those guys have transitioned. Yeah, it's, I mean, he, he left a legacy. Today in the Yachtly Crew text message thread, they put up a, uh, MTV had gone to his house to take a look at his recording studio. And they're showing all these guitars, a guitar he repaired. All of these, like, just tapes and tapes and tapes and tapes and tapes and archive. Archives of archives, a fractal of archives of music that he created that was just never heard or seen by the world. And, and music, of course, that, was, that evolved into the music, the songs that we love. But boy, oh boy, you know, that stuff has just got to get released. It's so crazy how musicians, they put this stuff away. Jerry Seinfeld is releasing a book, and it's all about the possible jokes that he wrote down in his notebooks, all the ones that he never actually put out there into the world. So it's so crazy. This just, I mean, this idea of creativity um, where we look at our our favorite actors, musicians, writers, and we go, oh my gosh, I could never do that. But um, we're only looking at the genius aspect of it until we are offered a glimpse into the behind the scenes and we get a chance to see the process from the seeds that sprouted the ideas that they showed and also all all of that extraordinary information that's just power packed in into a a vault that that nobody has seen before it's incredible because when we get a chance to look at that just like with the beatles they'll they'll put out these albums and then you'll get to hear these demos you'll get to hear the behind the scenes of them joking and stuff behind the 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 background i what i what i hope is that by these things being released and, and going out there in the public, it inspires a lot more artists that just match, you know, match themselves up competitively with their favorite artists and go, oh, I can never do that. Eddie Van Halen, just imagine how many people he has influenced across the years, how many people have picked up a guitar thanks to him. And his legacy will live on. There will be a, you know, undoubtedly a movie about it. And that's what's beautiful. He, he, he transforms into various shapes and forms. He, he transitions into these extraordinary shape-shifted things. There's going to be plenty of, of deep fakes with his face on stuff. This day and age with movies, you can, you can, you know, put these people right there into the movie. So you could have an entire movie with all these rock gods hanging out. You get impersonators who, who do their voices real good, and then you just go... What? You just put... You just plan it out ahead of time, and you deep fake those those actual faces onto those rock stars, and then this way the estates can all have a piece of that movie. They they all can, you know, feel great about the legacy perpetuating. There's a big mess up with a uh, big. I was reading this article about Jimi Hendrix's estate. Just just a big, crazy mess up. He apparently had left his. Uh, who was the ne- his heir his heirloom uh, or his his uh, heir the heir of his estate apparently was just a drunkard you know just a like 
irresponsible person. That's you don't want an irresponsible person handing <laughs> handling your legacy. If their concern is more about getting drunk and, you know, they won't hesitate to sell if they know that they'll get, you know, $10,000 off an unreleased song that no one's ever heard before and they got to, you know, if they're on drugs or they got um they're going to get kicked out of their apartment. They might find themselves doing that. However, having said that, I trust that there are enough good people. Um, his son, Eddie Van Halen's son, Wolf. I think his name's Wolf. Uh, Wolf. Would that be Van Halen? Is Eddie's middle name Van, or is Van Halen the last name? Anyway, yeah, Eddie Van Halen. Any of you folks, um, if you are Eddie Van Halen fans... Call the hotline, 561-203-9179. I'd love to hear your thoughts, your sentiments. Also, uh, stay tuned for the secret code at the end of the next segments. And uh, download it, please. If you want to download just that thing, if you have an issue with downloading it off of the uh, the podcast, email me, inspiratoprojecto at gmail.com. Or you could call the hotline, 561-203-9179, and just say, hey, can I have that audio? I want to play with it. I want to see, see if, what kind of nuggets are in there. I'll send you three versions. I'll send you my slowed-down version. I'll send you the original, just really quiet version. Um, and then I'll send you the version where I just try to just raise the volume on the thing. So thank you so much for listening, folks. Here we go. Today is Tuesday the 6th. It's now 1.41 p.m. We are uh, taking a stroll up to uh, get the rent paid today. I had an extraordinary time yesterday hanging out with Kelly Lee Williams, Reverend Mark Timmons, Tara Timmons, and Brian DeVille. And, of course, Phil Donlin. My buddy, buddy from long ago, back in the day. And, uh... We worked on Phil Donlin's commercial. He had a commercial shoot. And his producer, Sage, asked me... If I... Uh... Knew anyone who wanted to... Be a part of this commercial shoot. And it was just so kick-ass because... uh, Luckily... Brian was available. And luckily... uh, Mark and Tara were available. So that was awesome. And... uh, Gosh, it, it was just so great. It was on a set. They shot on a set... Which I'm sure has been used for who knows how many cop shows or courtroom dramas. Uh, there was a courtroom set. There was a jail. Uh, there was what looked like the uh, office of a police off uh, police uh, police precinct. Is that what you call them? Precinct. That'd be a great name for something. The precinct of something. The Precinct of Paranormality. So, yeah. Yesterday was just so, so much fun. So much fun. And the, and, it, and it flowed. The, the conversation just flowed. The, in, the, the inspiration, it moved, baby. It grooved. So, ideally... You will get a, a, a clear, a good understanding of, get a good understanding of improvisation, um, the skills, the yes and skills that are inherent within the framework of ensemble mindsets, the reciprocation the beautiful precipitation of ideas 
And uh, gosh, it's just it's just it's just an ideal place to be. I don't know if you heard Kelly say yesterday, but he said, "Man, I I don't really have any friends. I don't have anyone I can talk to about this type of stuff." And how kick-ass is that? He came across just the right people. He lives out in Las Vegas. He 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 came all the way out to be a part of the commercial. He got the audition. He came all the way out to be a part of this commercial all the way out from Las Vegas. And it was interesting because he was on his way back to Las Vegas. We had uh, decided to stop off at that uh, uh, cemetery out in... We decided to stop at the cemetery, uh, Lake Forest Cemetery, which I believe that was the Betty Davis Cemetery. I think that's the Betty Davis Cemetery. So we went up, we hung around, we found an empty grave, which I've never seen. And it was just really, really calm just to hang out with the, uh, with the graves. And of course, we met that nice fella uh, who we interviewed uh, briefly who works at the place. We were able to talk with him a little bit and uh, get his opinions on the floating orbs that he's seen. I mean, there was, there was just so much great cosmic talk that just zoop, came about. Oh, my gosh. Just incredible, man. Our lives are filled with extraordinary, extraordinary circumstances. Extraordinary, unexpected surprises, benefits, gifts. Oh, man. By the way, I'm seeing less and less people wearing masks outside. What are your, what are your, what are your thoughts about masks? If, if we catch coronavirus from other people and you're not near them, are you okay with wearing your mask? Or are you afraid of someone who is very, very strict about mask wearing? Are you afraid that they're going to see you and then yell at you and call you out? Like, if you're by yourself, are you okay with not wearing a mask since you're not around anybody? Or do you wear your mask at all times? Mm-hmm. I uh, I tend to like to not wear my mask so I could breathe in the fresh air when there's no one around. Today I te- seem to be passing up folks on the sidewalk. Um, so I'm wearing my mask. But come on. Which reports are the reports that we need to listen to? The reports that talk about herd immunity, the reports that talk about coronavirus doesn't float through the air, Um, the reports that say it's good to have sunshine on your face, or do we only listen to the reports that just say, uh, wear your mask? So, so, so interesting. Everyone's got an opinion, don't they? A lot of those opinions are based on other people's opinions. Isn't that interesting? So think about that. Knowing that a majority of the opinions that are out there are based off of opinions previously stated, perhaps in the exact same way or even a slightly different way, uh, from people that they highly regard, they respect, um... You know, someone hears something that their favorite talk show host says, and then they they go ahead and repeat it the best to their ability. Um, Then there's, of course, the... uh, Then there's the... um, uh, You know, then there are the the philosophers who are hanging out under the... uh, under the, uh, the mulberry trees on the islands just hanging out there all by themselves, coming up with all these ideas, ways to connect with the universe. And isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? Some of the most cosmic information that we could ever hear from these philosophers 
when they're just out there by themselves, contemplating, living with nature, being with nature, undistracted by what, you know, all this other stuff, as you can hear. So imagine being out there, you're in solitude, you're with yourself, you're with nature. I would say anyone who's feeling social anxiety, get out in nature. Just get out into nature. Get out in nature and start hanging out with your true self, your true nature, which is nature. You're not, you know, you weren't born from buildings. You came from nature. So imagine these philosophers who go out there in nature, they come up with these grand ideas, they write these books, then they end up coming across texts, manuscripts, parchments, uh, uh, books, etc., etc., and so forth written documentation of other philosophers who maybe hundreds of years before or millennia before had also thought about when they were communing with nature. So that's kind of an interesting thing. So it works both ways. So don't worry. Knowing that whatever you're immersed in, that's, that's what's going to be giving you... Um, your teachings, your education. You surround yourself with nature all the time. You're gonna, you might find, end up finding yourself starting to live your life um, analogous to just how nature works, the unfolding of nature. If you find yourself really concerned, furrowed brow, um, what do they call those? Um, Oh, gosh, what is that? What is that? Oh, I've got a... You know, you hear people go, Oh, I've got a... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's what gives people, you know, the headaches. The feeling like they're just stuck. They're crazy. They're in a pinball machine. Watching all... Paying attention to all of the burdens that the news mandates that is important for us to get concerned about or to get flipped out over. It's like, we are requiring for you, we're inviting you to become concerned about this and scream and yell about it. Of course, of course you're going to have headaches. You're going to not know what to do. You're going to feel suicidal. Go out into nature. Go out into nature. All right, we're here at the bank. I got to get some rent paid. We'll talk to you later. It's now 3.39. Today is... Uh, what do we got? The 7th here. Uh, man. I uh, just want to let you know, we got two interviews that will be released. We've got the second part of Scaramanga Silk and the third part with Nina Rubin. So that's going to be so interesting um, when you all get a chance to hear that. Lots of highly vibrational material. It's always so, so good and so important to have, have, the, uh, have those high vibrations going. So very important. Because um, it, be, it balances out the uh, negativity in the world. It balances out all the just bad stuff, man. Just all this stuff. It's interesting how the very people that are cynical about optimism or positivity, those very people that make fun of it or go, oh, positive thinking, that doesn't work. Uh, those very same people are very miserable with their lives. I've noticed. If that's you and you're not miserable with your life, then, then I found someone who defies, uh, defies what I'm talking about here, which is fine. I'm just talking about the people that I've met um, in real life, chat rooms, Twitter, and stuff like that. I'm just talking about my own experiences here um, where I've seen that happen. And I think, well, do you enjoy being miserable? Do you enjoy uh, 
feeling grumpy and do 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 you enjoy that? Um, and I would say their answer is probably no. So then you go, what's the alternative? Do you, I mean, do you want to get back to... Okay, so by you saying that you don't want to be miserable, what are you doing to get to the other side? What are you doing to, f- to fill in the blanks, supplement it with something good, something nutritious, something exciting, enlightening? What are you putting in there? What's the alternative? A lot of folks are just not making those direct connections. They're not making the direct connections. Ah, my feet hurt. Oh, my feet hurt. Oh, my feet hurt. Well, uh, you're walking in broken shards of broken glass. Yeah, but my feet hurt. My feet hurt. Yeah, you're wa- you're walking in broken glass. Here is a uh, a cottony, fluffy shag rug. You can you can step on this. It feels so good. It's inspiring, it's enlightening, it gives you lots of ideas. No, no. Who wants to walk on that fluffy shag rug? Things can't be easy and satisfying all the time. Life is about struggle. Life is about, you know, shitty things going on all over the place. Okay, that's what you're defining life to be. Okay. Do you allow for... uh, do you allow for the idea that this world is a dynamic place? Yes. Do you think all perspectives are valid? If you say yes, then you have to allow for the fact that someone else's perspective is that the world is not a shitty place and that life is not about struggle. You have to allow for that. And um, if you just simply not trying to make yourself feel better Um, or to get, you know to do that if you're not trying to do that then you're you're just going to continually wallow in that same precipitation that's all it is over and over and over again so, there's, there's a whole another aspect to what's going on. It just needs to be seen from a universal kind of mindset.
Hi, this is Jay Ossing from Twin Peaks The Return. You're listening to Inspirado Projecto.